the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, including those of you who are with us online. And also with you.
That's right. It's right after the 9.30 worship service. Yes, but guess what else? What else, Tia? We have our own email address, and anyone who wants to come to the Easter egg hunt could email us and let us know. So we have enough eggs and prizes and stuff. Great idea. What is our email address? TinyMouseCenterBreath at gmail.com. What's that? Just tell our humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay then. See you later. Crocodile. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> okay, alligator.
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord.
Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out. His hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Praise to the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our God who calls us to live in grace, to act with justice, to love and serve one another, and to walk humbly with God. Amen. Have you ever heard the term God wink? Yeah. So I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> it's, if you don't know, it's a shorthand way for people of faith to describe the way something serendipitous happens when things seem to miraculously align or fall into place without any effort at all. These things are easy not to notice or to just write off as coincidence. But when you do take notice, it can be a profound boost on a journey of faith. It's as if 
God isn't winking at you as if to say, I'm here, keep on going. When I served as pastor at a church in Livonia for 10 years, these sorts of coincidences served our mission well. I had followed a pastor who had been there 32 years and who prided himself on never changing anything. <laughs> he said that to me. <laughs> Their search process for a new pastor took several years and they connected with 75 candidates, most of whom would not touch the call. And most of those they did interview, they did not like. Once they extended the call to me after three interviews, my own discernment process was like climbing out of the Grand Canyon on a path full of switchbacks to accommodate the steep income. The clear word that I finally received in a prayerful moment was, just go and be yourself. Well, I can do that. <laughs> but that proved harder than I thought. Because being myself could be off-putting to folks who would become so accustomed to the style of my predecessor. He was pretty staid, S-T-A-I-D. That was a Wordle this week, if you play Wordle. I play it with my son, and we both had to look the word up after we, after we got it. It means sedate, respectable, and unadventurous. I was not that. I especially have difficulty keeping still when I hear music. I move, even in worship. <coughs> One Sunday, the sending hymn was in three-quarter time, which I hear as a dance. <laughs> the organist played it as a dirge. Plotting. <laughs> I felt the beat in my bones. And I felt compelled to give it some form of expression on behalf of the rest of the people. So as I went out down the center aisle, I did a little wall step. <laughs> well, there was an uproar. <laughs> One of our more prominent members cried for three days. And people began calling me the irreverent reverend. <laughs> the next week, I was browsing at a consignment shop. A ceramic plaque screamed out at me, as if to say, this is for you. This is for you. This is to give you some encouragement. On the plaque was a quote from Helen Keller. It said, one cannot consent to creep if one has the impulse to soar. This was a God wink for me. That plaque is hanging in my new office. <laughs> in the meantime, I accepted that this congregation was not ready for this form of expression in worship. I had stepped on a landmine. I drew upon the wisdom of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the 20th century German martyr. He wisely said, those who love their dream of a community more than the community itself destroy the community. I gave the matter up to God and let it rest. It was not time to soar when it came to movement in worship. God gave me the discipline to creep for the sake of the whole community. Six months later, 
I received a letter from an 80-year-old woman named Sally. She wrote, Dear Pastor Dana, I have been looking for a place that would welcome my form for worshiping, liturgical dance. Only I call it worship through movement, because it is not dance per se. She wrote, as Martha Kirk said in her book, Dancing with Creation, religious dance should be done from the inside out. What a dancer knows deep in his or her heart comes out of feet and fingers. And she wrote in another quotation, Martha Kirk said, dance assists us to envision life as an event of dialogue, where the subject matter takes over and we are lost in the happening. Sally continued, I have been doing this form of worship since 1971, and I hope to do it one more time, though my time is running out as I am approaching the age of 80. And then she closed the letter. I guess I must think a little bit like Helen Keller, who said, one can never consent to creep if one has the impulse to soar. <laughs> Leave it to the Holy Spirit to provide an 80-year-old woman to introduce the idea of worship through movement to a staid congregation. God, I'm here. Keep on going. dancing and worship. Your call to me is a God wink. I need a faith community to be a part of. I think my availability to walk this journey with you is a God wink. You need what I do. I need what you do. Do you remember that very first Sunday I was here in January? I was filling in for Pastor Marie and introducing you to the idea of an intentional, structured process to discern God's vision based in your mission. The first reading that day just happened to be your mission. From Micah chapter 6, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? Tiny mouse and giraffe base their presentation on that verse. We had not planned that ahead of time. I had no idea what they were going to be doing. God wink. I'm here. Keep on going. You've been through a lot since that day. And today, you're meeting after worship to vote on a new budget for the remainder of the fiscal year. You are blessed with faithful, committed, diligent leaders who have developed a pared-down realistic, bare-bones budget. In the midst of all this, there are undercurrents that King of Kings will close. And what does God ask in our first reading from a lectionary that I did not choose ahead of time? Can these bones live. Can these bones live? Today we meet Ezekiel, we've already met him, we meet him again, in that reading with a vision 
for the renewal of the people Israel. It's 587 BCE. Jerusalem and its temple are conquered and destroyed by Babylon. Some of the survivors are marched into exile in Babylon, some 800 miles away. There they live as refugees, separated from their homeland under conditions of oppression, separated from everything they once knew and to which they once belonged. The people lament. Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Yet, Yahweh orders Ezekiel to prophesy to these dry bones and to call them back to life. It was an impossible challenge. And yet, God did resurrect this people of the dry bones. God did bring them back to their land. And God did it through nothing but vision. God paints the picture. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. Oh, my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit within you and you shall I do not mean to put rosy colored glasses on. I am making no promises, church, except to be faithful to my call and to be faithful to the process before us. God is the one who asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel's answer is the right one. Oh, Lord God, you know. God knows what's going to happen with King of Kings. I do not. It may be premature, but so far, these godmas confirm for me that we're moving at least in a helpful direction. Today, I wonder if we are Ezekiel and we are Lazarus, all wrapped up in one church. Lazarus, by the way, means the one God helps. The one God helps. That's us. Could it be that today, like Lazarus, Jesus is calling us out of a tomb. <clears throat> could it be that a budget we could not meet has been like the grave clothes binding us, binding us with anxiety and fear for the future? Unbind him and let him go. Jesus calls. Could it be that a pared down, bare bones budget will give us the flexibility we need to dance into the future from the inside out, from what we know deep in our hearts? where we might envision our life together as a dance, an event of dialogue where the subject matter takes over and we are lost in the happening. In other words, where we will be free to make the main thing the main thing. The reason for the God Wakes today is the same as the reason for the miracles of Ezekiel and Lazarus yesterday. So that the people 
and that would be us, will know that God is God. So that God may be glorified. So that we will be convinced that God is worthy of our trust. That it makes sense to depend on God and not only on ourselves. That it is a good idea to trust in God and in God's vision for God's people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Is there any prayer requests outstanding that we need to acknowledge? Sustained by Wait. God's... I think this might be a, a point where I can say that I'm, I'm moving to Virginia uh, this next week. Uh, I'll be near to my daughter, Stephanie. And I just want to wish you all so much good luck in the future and all the blessings that the Lord and we can give to each other. Um, Aileen, we're going to bring you up at the end of the service, okay? Oh, is that a fact? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make a big deal about this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hold that thought. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church, deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe, and bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God, your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing especially the soil and water around and near East Palestine, Ohio. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Merciful God, you redeem the world and its people. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, ableism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, you weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness especially those in, on our prayer list and others we keep in our hearts. Uh, we especially pray for Dan Klenzar uh, that his health will stabilize. Uh, he needs uh, your prayers as he is being tested. Uh, also for Candy, who is having uh, physical issues. Um, you hear us when we call to you Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God, you are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> and lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to our and grace. it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So, we do have a few announcements. Um, Holy Week is coming up, and we need some help with worship. We've got a lot of extra readings, um, and I'm going to run to my office and grab a, I have a clipboard if, um, when you're on your way out, I'll be standing, well, I'll just put it, I don't know, where should I put it? Tell me where to put where it. The coffee pot. By the coffee pot. <laughs> so just, just sign up for a day that you can help. If you can help with more than one day, that's great. And then we'll, we'll get in touch with you. And I know we've got the meeting after worship today. And what else? Aileen, then. Oh. Come on down. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know what? It's hello and goodbye. <laughs> I'm very delighted to meet you. I've heard so many wonderful things about you. And I know you're going to be very, very much missed. What, what do you want to say to everybody now? I know that you, you were a missionary to Thailand and a social worker and a very active and beloved member of this church for how many years? Well, from the beginning, really, when, my, when I arrived in Ann Arbor for the first time, I was 30 years old, you know, <laughs> and um, it's been a lot of years, and in and out of Ann Arbor, and in and out of the life of King King. An interesting ride, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't over yet. <laughs> it's so familiar at this point. <laughs> at the same time, for many of us. Uh, I, I enjoyed all the years I had here. I, I, as I said, I raised my kids here, and I've watched so many of us um, get older and mellower, and I'm uh, still continuing to share with each other and with the new ones that have come. So, those who are just arriving, hang on. <laughs> oh, now I have a microphone, and I'm done saying what I was. <laughs> I'm going to Virginia. I'm going to Virginia because the, one of my two daughters uh, stayed in Virginia from college on and, and uh, is, is going to be closer with me than we have in many years. When we don't live in the same town, um, you have this long distance kind of mothering. And uh, I'm happy to say that it's going to be in, in uh, the state that she loves and that I will grow to love. So. I thought of you on the wintry days this last winter. <laughs> I'm thinking that perhaps it'll be a little, little more pleasant as, as these next years happen. But, but that's why, why Virginia, in case people wonder. Um, I think that many of us uh, have heard of other people uh, in our lives who are moving closer to their children. And I think that this is also a gift in that we're well enough to make a move. And you know, strong enough to say, you know, I, I can take another round. So I'm going to do it. Amen. So I stay up here because I want to offer a prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God. We thank you for Aileen and for our life together in this congregation and community. As she has been a blessing to us, so now send her forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
stay up here with us, and then you walk out with Gina and me, and people can greet you. Oh, okay. Okay, you stand, stand by us and they can greet you. So, please rise in spirit to receive the blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen.